Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christ is our midst. Yeah. I stumbled across an article in uh, Beyond the Bars, which is the newsletter of the Orthodox Prison Ministry. And there was a story in there by Alexander Dvorkin from his work, Otho Stories, that talked about a village priest in Greece, a small village. And he had two children, one a son and a daughter, the son being a lot older than the daughter. Uh, and their son, when the daughter was very young, went off to Athens to study and was a very pious young man, he used to love to share his faith and actually would walk around with a cross. And one evening as he was walking around Athens, he ran across some you know, young hoodlums people were out looking for trouble, and he began to share with them that they needed to change their life. And the young man became embittered and didn't like what uh, this priest's son had to say, and they ended up beating him to death and stealing his cross. And the word got back to the father, and he was completely devastated, especially for the death of the son and that uh, his faith was taken away from him at that crucial moment. Uh, and the father lived in sadness for years to come. And eventually he became a widow and his young daughter grew up. And she fell in love with a man. And she began to get close to him and the father sort of liked the young man. And you know, he wasn't actually young, he was a little bit older than, a lot older than the, the daughter. But uh, the father actually grew to love him and began to share with him. And one day the man came to him and said, Father, I would like to come to you for confession. And he said, sure, let us, let us go into the church. And then he says, before we do confession, I need to tell you something. He goes, I need to tell you that I am not worthy of your family. I'm not worthy of your family. And the priest asked him why. And he says, because many years ago, I, was, I used to hang out with some bad people. And I you know, didn't do very good things. And one day we were walking through the town, and we stumbled upon a man who began to share his faith with us. And we ended up killing him. And I actually ended up stealing his cross. And he pulls out the cross. And it was the priest's son's cross. The priest said that he felt like the floor was taken out from underneath of him. And he felt like he was going to die and fall in this hole. And he could not believe it. And he says, Father, I feel so bad for what I've done. And I beg God for forgiveness for this sin. And the priest immediately came to his senses. And realize, he says, young man, and he says, man, if God forgives you, then I forgive you. The man had no idea that the person he was confessing to was the father of the man that he had killed, who was wanting to marry his daughter. The man, the priest, went home. He actually gathered up all of his son's pictures and put them away so that the daughter would never know and the man would never know that that was his son, who the young man stole that cross from and who was murdered by him and his friends. I have to say, when I read this story, I thought this priest is truly going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I began to think, do I even have a chance? Do I even have a chance? Because it is a beautiful story of forgiveness. And on this Sunday of forgiveness, I said, what better story for us to hear than the story of this priest who was able to forgive the murderer of his son. And so often we stop and evaluate, you know, so-and-so said something nasty to me, you know, I don't like the way they look, you know, they took my seat in church. Uh, you know, whatever, you know, things that we get mad about, you know, did you hear what the priest said, you know, the parish council drives me crazy, you know, all of these things that bug us about church, 
that we get so mad at, that sometimes even keep us from coming to church. And yet, here we are on this beautiful Sunday of forgiveness, where we are given the opportunity to examine ourselves, to examine ourselves, to not focus on others, but to, before Lent begins, to say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Because it is so easy to focus on everyone else's sins. To even get even sidetracked by all of the things that we're about to do. You know, getting all of our recipes ready. All of the fastings to make sure that we got enough soy cheese and soy hot dogs. And, you know, to make it feel like we're not fasting too much. You know, but Lord, it's a sacrifice to eat soy. Right? And, you know, we end up spending more time that. Instead of focusing on ourselves. And I don't mean in the sense of pride. I mean focusing on doing the work of a surgeon and cutting out the sin of our hearts and our lives. To be able to spend more time falling in love with Jesus Christ. The reason for our faith. To be able to come to services. To be able to come to confession. To confess our sins. And think, woe is me, a sinner. You think, woe is me who's going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ one day. To stand before him and give account of all of my sins. And yet here I am, O oh Lord, giving account of all of my brothers and sisters' sins before me. So often it is easy to think, Lord... Didn't you see what they did to me? How can you not just strike them dead? And the Lord, you know, brings out a huge work. A big book of all of our sins. Hands it to us and says, are you sure that they're the problem? Right? It's really us. It's our own sins and our own wickedness. In our own bitterness, our own jealousies, our envies, all of the things that so easily entrap us and pull us away from the love of Christ. But when we gaze into the icon of Christ, and we see the just judge, but we also see a merciful Savior, and He says, and we say to ourselves, how can He even... He can even save me. He can even save me. And in Jesus, in our gospel reading today, we see that Jesus' forgiveness is conditioned upon our forgiveness of others. We say it every Sunday. We say it in almost every service. We say it in our prayers daily. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If we want to be judged, then we are going to, if we are going to be judged, we're going to be judged by how we judge others. You know, the scriptures tell us right before this in the Beatitudes, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us what type of people we should be. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For what? Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are when you, when men revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For great is your reward in heaven. This is the type of people that we should be. That words don't bother us. You know, it used to be the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right? Now our society has completely thought every word is going to hurt me. Oh my goodness, where's my safe space, you know? We're, we are we are a, we are offended people. We are offended people because we like to focus on everyone else except ourselves. We wouldn't be so offended. You know what's offensive? Our own sins. Not being able to overcome those little things that trip us up every single day, that drive us a wedge between our brothers and sisters and between Christ. And this Sunday has been given to us for us to say, you know what? Forgive me, a sinner. And the best part, 
The best part, my favorite part. God forgives. It's not even so much us forgiving. It's by it's basically us recognizing that God has forgiven you, a sinner. He has forgiven me. He has forgiven everybody. And that is the beautiful thing about our salvation, <coughs> that we rejoice in this day. Our epistle talks about putting off all of the lust of the flesh. Putting off all of the lust of the flesh. <coughs> all of our passions. All of the things that the world thrives and revels in. What are our passions? Our passions should be for Christ. To love Him more. To be angry at our own sins. To long to spend time with Him. I've just read a beautiful book. I don't know if any of you heard, listened to Father Tom Soroka's live broadcast this past week. But there was a, a young singer from a popular uh, Christian secular band, crossover type band, that's called Flyleaf. Uh, and their lead singer, Lacey Sturm, had heard her husband recently became Orthodox. And she has a beautiful, powerful story. And I read her book yesterday, in one day, right? In one afternoon. No, I, I'm not a fast reader, so miracles do happen. <laughs> and I read her book in yesterday afternoon. What amazed me about her story was that she has a longing for God. She was an atheist, living a life of sin and wickedness, was moments away from following through, dying by suicide. Beautiful story. Literally moments, minutes away until her grandmother came to her and said, there's something wrong with you. You need to go to church right now. Beautiful. And she did. It saved her life. And her passion for Christ comes through in his book. And now she's Orthodox. Beautiful. Because we realize that in our church is forgiveness. It is the opportunity to be in union with Christ. And the union that we have with Christ drives us to love and forgive others. In saying to the Desert Fathers, there's a story that a young monk who was struggling with pride. And the abbot told him, this is what I want you to do. Every day this week, I want you to go out to the cemetery and curse the dead. Curse the dead every single day. Go out and curse the dead. And then come back. And when they come, when you come back and you came back at the end of the week, they said, well, what did they say? He said, they didn't say anything. He says, okay, now go out this week and praise them. And he goes out, praises them every day for a week. And he comes back at the end of the week, and, he, and they, the abbot said, what did they say? And they said, they didn't say anything. And he said, this is exactly how you should be. When people praise you or curse you, we are to be dead to them and not say anything. It's beautiful. The story of forgiveness is really a story of us. I would like to close with this from the homilies of Elder Ephraim from St. Anthony's Monastery in Arizona, blessed memory. And he says this. He says, what excuse will we have? How will we justify ourselves on the great day of judgment? When all the books are open and we are judged according to our works, recorded therein. When all the trivial things of this world, which we fight over and seek a bed, to avenge, still have ceased to exist, when we will no longer be able to correct anything, when money, property, repentance, insults, degradations, and the like will have vanished, when our transgressions will comprise an entire library of quick books, where the faults of others against us we will, con will con constitute only a single page on a few lines at most. How will God erase all of these volumes containing our sins? We did not want to erase only one page 
of our brother's faults against us. The evil that someone has done to us, whether it be our neighbors, our brothers, our colleagues, or our relatives, is not as significant as it seems. It is transient. Even if it lasts a lifetime, one day it will come to pass. It does not have eternal validity and power and existence. However, the harm we inflict upon ourselves when we do not forgive is endless. It has an eternal dimension. We will be punished endlessly. Where are all the previous generations of people who left from this life once and for all without having forgiven others? What did these people gain by not forgiving? Are they not filled with bitter, unproductive regret now when there's no longer any possibility of correction? Of course, if someone does not believe in these things, he is certainly free to do as he wishes. However, a person who claims to be an Orthodox Christian and who believes in God and the Gospel must not be found without a red pen. And what exactly does this mean? He says, in the official records of government departments, entries are crossed out with the red pen. But using the red pen, each of one of us wants to be a true Orthodox Christian. We'll cross out our brother's transgressions. Every person, whether a stranger or an acquaintance, Orthodox or non-Orthodox, is our brother. This pen will prove useful for when we have this life. It will serve as the key that will open the gates of paradise. In other words, if we do not cross out others' faults with the red pen, we will not be able to open paradise. However, if we do cross them out, we will be able to insert the red pen into the lock, and the door of paradise will open for us. As soon as a person says, may God forgive you, and prays for his brother, paradise opens. Today, paradise will open. We will take out the red pen, and we will cross out our brothers and sisters' sins. And we will ask God to forgive us our sins. And they will say in return to us, God forgives. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen.